Good morning, gang. It's Tuesday morning. I got home last night from, from being with you guys up in Fresno. This is my station, NBC7, here in San Diego, strapped and ready to go for the day. This is my little rig that I use here. Fire gear and a change of clothes, tripod, and a bag full of goodies. GoPro, extra batteries, microphones, and then my stewardess bag here. This behemoth has two laptops in it because I still like to bring around my Mac for special projects in case I get a wicked idea. And it has my NBC laptop, which is a PC, which is an acronym for piece of crap. I'm gonna try and take you along a journey today as I do my story. Oh my God, I love air conditioning. <laughs> I set up the story to meet my interview subject at 9.30, and of course it's 9.15. See what I did there? I got here early. The story today is basically, see all this vast wilderness? There's nothing out here. And way off in the middle of nowhere out there, they're going to be building more than a thousand homes, a new school, fire station, and whatnot. People don't know about this project, and I'll be informing the community about the project. So that worked out well for me because I showed up early. They showed up early. It would have sucked if they were waiting for me. So they're leading me out to the spot where we're gonna do the interview. And I'm breaking the law right now to make this video for you. But I'm an MMJ, I can do what I want. This road isn't rough at all. It's so hot. I left Fresno because it was hot. So you wore heels out here, huh? I did. Developer Liz Jackson looks forward to seeing a new community here. I am. You saw my video. It wasn't that spectacular because there's really nothing out here for her to do. You know, I got a shot of her walking through the sand in her high heels, which I thought was kind of cool. I'm turning her into a character, even though she's a developer. She's the only one I can get to come out here on short notice. So now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm literally gonna shoot the living daylights out of nothing, going wide, medium, tight. A traffic light is already waiting right where the pavement ends. And the rustic Proctor Valley Road begins. And then I'm gonna shoot my stand-ups. I'm gonna dry off literally right before I hit record. I'm gonna dry off, say my line, hopefully get some water soon because um, I forgot to pack it. Yeah. This was one of my favorite little tricks that I learned from another MMJ by the name of Michelle Michael. I don't even know if I'm framed up right now. I use a light stand, so I raise it to about as tall as I am. I put it roughly where I want to stand. That's roughly how tall I am. So that's Joe Little now. So I'm going to zoom in on Joe Little. Oh, well, I was out of focus. I'm gonna focus. My feet and my head will not be chopped off. I actually want to have this in the frame and the road going off that direction. So I'm gonna stand right about here, but like I know my head, I have headroom and foot room. In fact, I'm gonna tilt down a little bit more because we have annoying CGs that appear down here. I haven't really thought about what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna mark the ground. That's roughly where I'm gonna stand and move the, oh, the beat up old, light stand. Most of you have never been out here, but this is Otay Ranch between Hamul and Chula Vista. And in the future, you're gonna see a lot more than just empty brush. Before I leave, I'm going to check my video to make sure it doesn't suck because I'm not with the camera, so I can't really hear if my audio is good. Uh-oh. Uh oh, see? This is why we check the video. My crappy lavalier, my lavalier, cut out on me and now I'm really ticked off because I nailed those in one take but the audio is garbage I got to do it again some sometimes I'm limited by technology I'm gonna be closer to the receiver literally switch the transmitter the lavalier from my left pocket to my right pocket because when I switched my left side it sort of broke the line of sight and that's when the, the microphone crapped out on me but I'm also coming closer but I am definitely going to focus in again Go. I want all of that nature and then this road behind me. So move this right out of the way. I know I'm in focus. Oh, I am sweating so much. Oh. Testing one, two, three. All right. That sounds good. We'll see even a fire station. Oh, it looks good. Sounded good. That was the first stand up. I'm happy with that. This little black bag is called a steady bag. It's one of my favorite toys. It allows me to put the camera on the ground, protect it from the elements, the dirt and whatnot, and water if there is any. It's like a tripod for the ground. I can get these cool low angle shots. I don't know if I can even show you what this shot looks like, but it allows me to get these cool low angle shots, nice and steady. Oh, but I love it. I'm now officially dying and I have to pee. There is absolutely no one out here. I know once I try and go pee, someone's gonna show up.
No one showed up, but I have my camera ready just in case. I feel better now. A bit dehydrated, I'm starting to see stuff. Like that snowman right there, I see him. Since my moving pictures options are pretty slim, I attach my GoPro to the side of the truck here. I wanted to highlight how crappy this road is. See if I can make it fall off. <laughs> I didn't make it fall off or break, so now I've moved it up to the windshield. I'm driving around the other side of the story, uh, a town called Hamul, trying to find another character, someone who can maybe balance out the story. Watch how I set this shot up. I focus on the truck, and I move the camera in front of it, lock the camera, and let the truck drive right on through my shot. I'm not gonna follow it, I'm just gonna let it go through my shot. I've got about another hour of time to uh, search this community of nothingness. Oh, that's the name of the development. Would you move? Well, I'm 80 years old, so I don't have to worry about it too much longer anyway. I was successful. Knocked on a door, found a dude. He gave me a couple of decent sound bites. I have a more balanced story. I've got the people who love the project. I've got a dude who hates the project. I am now heading back to the station. I'm back in the newsroom where I have just carried all my gear back inside, which is why, once again, I am sweaty. I put a fresh battery in the camera. I put a fresh battery in the lobs. I'm recharging my GoPro. If I get called out again today or first thing tomorrow morning, I'm ready to go. <sighs> I just checked in with the producers and now I'm back at my desk. I'm ingesting my video. There's all the clips from what I shot today. I'll type my script up here, edit it here, dry off here, and uh, cuss a lot here. I'm transcribing my sound bites right now. It doesn't look like much now, but this is Proctor Valley Road. Way over there is Hamul. On the back side of the camera is Chula Vista. In a few years, you might see homes, schools, even a fire station. There's not much out here. A few faded restricted area signs have kept people out of Proctor Valley for decades. Until now. So you wore heels out here, huh? I did. Developer Liz Jackson looks forward to seeing a new community here. I am. She's part of the team building this, Adara at Otay Ranch. It will include more than a thousand homes, a new school, shops, and a fire station. It's a thoughtful community. A thoughtful community along Proctor Valley Road, a dirt road linking Chula Vista's suburbs with the slower paced Hamul. Bad, bad dirt road. Ron McCubrey's wife wanted peace and quiet 30 years ago. She always wanted to live in the country. Ron isn't looking forward to his new neighbors at Adara. Oh, that's the name of the development. Would you move? Well, I'm 80 years old, so I don't have to worry about it too much longer anyway. I think most people have had the expectation that these villages would be coming forward. Jackson says the county approved developing Proctor Valley 25 years ago. A traffic light is already waiting right where the pavement ends and the rustic Proctor Valley Road begins. It will be paved but remain only two lanes. Jackson says traffic will slow at a series of roundabouts. It's planned as a trans transitional community and I think it fits in well. A transitional community in an untouched area that could soon be home to hundreds of families in Proctor Valley. I think it'll be a really nice place to live. Joe Little, NBC7. It's now 6 a.m. Wednesday morning. Yes, I'm shamelessly putting my Emmys behind me. I had a lot of troubles with that story, mostly with my lavalier. Really let me down. It's just one of those things we have to deal with. It started giving me those hits. You heard that it happened in my stand-up. It happened with the old guy I interviewed. I had to adapt, overcome, and persevere. Thankfully, it was so quiet out there that the shotgun picked her up and it was usable sound. It bothered the hell out of me. I could not go back out there and, and drag her back out there. I needed the sound. I could still hear his sound bites or some of those fun moments, like when he said, I'm 80, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna be here long to worry about it. But I think it was a pretty decent story. It was not a report. I could have simply gone out there and said, hey, they're building this thing here. I tried to develop the humanity in the characters, even the developer. She wore heels out in the middle of the desert. And then the old guy, I mean, he, I could have him up there saying, I hate this project, but he said, you know, well, you know what, I, I don't even know the name of the place, and 
I'm gonna die, so whatever. I mean, those are better, just better moments and better sound bites to make them real. Today, I have to go back into the station and fix my lavalier before I go back out again. I have three other lavs because I'm a lav nerd. That story's not gonna win me any awards, but it was a good story. It was a better way to tell about this new development that no one knows about. I did not do a garden gnome stand-up. I used my background. Remember to be aware of what's behind you. It's Wednesday? I don't even know what day it is. I'm so tired. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope your hair looks better than mine at 6 a.m. Work hard. Trust Faith, trust Josh, trust Les to get you through. If you have any questions, email me or call me or text me. Text me is better because I'll actually respond that faster. I uh, hope you enjoyed that little lesson. This is Joe Little in San Diego signing off.